Let's all turn our Bibles to book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to look at two verses, 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The title of the message is Life-Changing Decisions. Life-Changing Decisions. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that Find it. Brother Ellen, can you please pray for the message? Amen. If you were to research how many decisions a normal person makes, an adult, there are very, you know, wide range of you know results you'll find. However, it's about between on a day to day basis, a person will make about seventy plus decisions in a day about 25 to 35 decisions in a year, and about a million plus throughout their lifetime. And for some, make a lot of decisions. For some, they don't make too many decisions. So it is decisions that you make which will determine what's going to happen the rest of your life. The decisions that you made this morning to come to church it's the right decision. The decision that you made this morning to read the Bible and pray, those are the right decisions. However, decisions that you made in the morning not to read the Bible, not to pray, and not to go to your local church, that those are the wrong decisions. Simple ones that we start the day with. Imagine out of hundreds of thousands of decisions that you made throughout your life, you made more regrettable decisions than the right decisions. I don't know if this is true. You know, it was from the, one of the Google sources, you know, Mir. It said about one in seven decisions people regret. One in seven. I don't know, it seems kind of low percentage. You know, if, I may, if I were to make seven decisions, you know, six of them are good and one of them is wrong. You know, maybe, right? However, as Christians, and however, as a, just a person, normal say people, there are decisions that you have to make, and yet it will determine how your life will be. There's one decision that some of you already you know, has made, including myself, or many of people, especially who's listening through our internet ministry, hasn't made. The question is, you know, how will you respond to Jesus Christ? How have you responded to Jesus Christ? The Bible says, you know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's a decision where you could either trust him as your Lord and Savior, or you could reject him as your Lord and Savior. Proverbs 16.25 says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When you and I make decisions based on our own thinking, based on you know, our you know, IQ, we're going to make a lot of wrong decisions, many, many wrong decisions. When you make emotional decisions, you tend to make wrong decisions. Because who uses emotions the most? 
It's the devil. That's why in the past, I was going to this secular church. All they did was praise and worship. If service was for an hour, 50 minutes was like all praise and worship. They have a projector in the front, and you just sing and sing and sing. Of course, it feeds the flesh, and then you feel good about it. And they say, you know, repeat after me in a prayer, which is to accept Christ almost every single week. And you do it, and as the Sunday goes by, Monday comes, you haven't gotten anything from Sunday. You start committing sin, and you start asking yourself, am I really saved? Because they don't teach assurance of salvation doctrine. So when I was growing up, was I making the right choice? Especially when you know there is a right Bible-believing church out there. If you're not going to that church, then you're making the wrong choice. I've talked about it to some of the brethren here. At Pastor Gina's church, they have brother and sister and mom who drive four hours to get to a church from a different state. It's a one way. It's not a round trip. I'm sure they have choices to make. Four hours, maybe average distance per hour is uh, 60 miles, 70 miles, you know. I mean, that is a long, long drive. However, to them, the best decision that they can make is to go to a place where they could listen to the truth and have fellowship with brethren. A lot of times people tend to forget that you and I are social creatures where fellowship is very important. Sometimes because of your flesh, you're so lazy that, you know what? Now we have something called YouTube. I'm just going to look at the YouTube, and I'm fine with that. It's, it's going to build your knowledge, definitely. However, there's a chance that it will also make you become more proud and haughty. Knowledge puffs up. That's why without the right fellowship in your life, you cannot grow as a Christian. Because through interaction, having fellowship with brethren, you get to see, you get to understand what other Christians are going through. And you tend to learn and you get to empathize. You get to kind of understand why things happen. As you know, you know a lot of our brethren, including you know, Pastor Shrav, is going through hardships with their physical ailments. Why do those things happen? Now, sometimes it happens so that afterwards, God will get all the glory, and others who see that God works mighty ways can give glory to God and can relate. The decisions that you make each day can have a positive or negative impact on everyone surrounding your life, including yourself. Say if you have family, say if you're father, mother, say if you're daughter, son, grandma, grandpa. The decisions that you make, people around you will see you and they will either glorify God or they will not glorify God. Some will curse God. Then, if you really think about, oh man, every decision I make is significant, then your life will be changed. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Have you taken lightly when it comes to decision making? When it comes to every day, little decisions that you have to make? Or are you always concentrating about only the big things? You know, big decisions. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 
The Bible says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. The Bible says that you need to examine yourselves. How many, how many of you actually examine yourselves on a daily basis? No one can say, I don't have time to examine myself. You think about yourself all the time. You think about yourself right now. You're thinking about you, 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 as in me, 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 all the time. Then you need to examine yourself on a daily basis. I mean, have I made the right choices today? Have I made the right decisions today? Did I really please God today? Did I glorify God today? If you say yes, 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 good. But you also find out that you haven't. Then what would you do? Do you go each day, day, day by day goes by with all the wrong decisions that you've made and you just let it pile up and pile up and pile up? No, you can't do that. You have to resolve it. Then how do you resolve it? Go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. That's why it is critical as part of your decision making life-changing decisions that you have to commit to make decisions every night, every day, every moment to confess your sins, get right with the Lord right away. The times that when you do not make the right decision of resolving your sin problems with the Lord, then what's going to happen? That sin will grow and grow and grow, and it will eventually ruin you. Let's look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So it is obvious that you and I sin. It is obvious that you and I need to confess our sins on a daily basis. When it comes to your decision making on a daily basis, do you confess your sins? Do you tell yourself, you know what, I need to get right with the Lord? Because Holy Spirit will be convicting you. Holy Spirit says, you know what, that's not right, what you're doing. You know? That's not virtuous. You know? That's not moral. That's not moderate as a Christian. That's being lazy. You're being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. As you make those wrong decisions, you have opportunities to make the right decision right away by confessing your sins. How many of you actually do that? If you are closer to the Lord, if you are closer to Lord Jesus Christ, if you have a right relationship, anytime you disappoint Him, I think your light bulb you know, goes on, oh man, I did it wrong. Lord, I'm so sorry. However, if you're not close to the Lord, of course, obviously, you are not going to confess your sins right away. And then we're not talking about for people who's getting confused. We're not talking about going to, you know, some dark room and telling somebody that, you know, I've sinned, Father, you know? We're not talking about that. It's one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? Especially if you're saved. If you don't do it, then imagine you have this spot on your body, right? You know, if you read, you know, look at Leviticus, you know, Exodus, you know, talk about leprosy. It's going to grow. And it's going to continue to grow. And you become a spiritual leper. Don't get me wrong. Just like what the Bible says, you know, because of circumcision of Christ, once you're saved, you're saved forever. You know, your body, and, I mean, your soul and your body, you know, separated forever. So you don't have to worry about burning in hell. However, you know, you reap what you sow, you're going to pay what you've done to the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is you know, God's temple. And as you ruin God's temple, Imagine what are the repercussions. 
Remember, what will be the result? Remember, God is an almighty God who's not going to let you get away with anything. That's why when we make our decisions, we really have to think about it. Every decision is significant to us, every little thing. At this moment, you could be thinking about what's going on outside of this room. You could be thinking about, I don't know, TV. You could be thinking about weather. You could be thinking about sleep. You could be thinking about coffee. You could be thinking about food. You could be thinking about, I don't know, your mom. You could be thinking about you know, your loved ones. However, you should be thinking about the Word of God and how He can change me. You know, our brethren, you know, as they pray, you know, they pray that this message can change them. You have to make a decision each day, especially before you listen to preaching or before Bible study. Do you want God's Word to change your life? Or are you the type of person always looking around? Ah, that message is for that brother. That message is for that sister. Man, I hope they change after they listen to the message. I mean, that is, that is the wrong decision that you're making. You know, when you don't look at yourself, especially making daily decision to get right with the Lord, the focus is always on you for good things. But every bad thing focuses on the others. Unfortunately, that includes your spouse, includes your children, includes your loved ones. That's why as Christians, some of you just never grow. You're where you were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But God forbid, you got worse as time passes by. And what is that result of? Those are result of bad decisions that you make. You know, people, when it comes to finances, people make bad decisions and they get into a lot of debt, right? You make better decisions, you know, you won't be in as much debt. Or your body, physical body, especially people who smoke and drink. I mean, do you expect that your body is going to be as good 10 years from now, 15 years from now? No. The people who do drugs, right? You could see before and after pictures of people who's, you know, drinking a lot, smoking, or doing drugs. They look so much worse than people who just doesn't do any of those and then just live a, you know, normal life. Or even it comes to eating, right? If you're always eating fattening food, right, you can't expect you to be, you know, you know, keeping a good, you know, healthy weight, if you are eating, you know, Twinkies and, you know, Ding Dongs are like every day, you know. No, you can't expect that to happen. Then those are the decisions that you make, right? And, you know, as you grow older, I'm pretty sure, you know, older you know, brothers and sisters will understand. You know, it's after midnight, you know, you get cravings. You're hungry. I mean, you have a choice to make. You could go out for a late night run of, you know, in and out, or you could just don't eat. But at that moment, just like any sin, decision will bring pleasure to your flesh, pleasure to you. However, just a few hours later when you wake up, how do you feel? You know, I mean, your stomach's a little bit bigger, right? You become a little slower. You feel a little more weight, and then you don't want to go up on that scale anymore until you don't eat for a while. And that's what's happening in your Christian life. You're making so many wrong decisions where you keep on feeding your spiritual self this wrong food, right? Worldly things, things against the Word of God, you know, things against, you know, local church. You know, hurting the brethren. Just keep on growing, right? Your flesh is loving it. Then what would happen? You know, you know, when people have to make a 
decision, especially people who's gotten so big, you know, they have to get some surgery, right, to become healthier, you know, gastric bypass surgery, something like that. If your soul is stagnant, if you backslidden so much, and spiritually you are in a bad state, what's going to happen? You're going to need a surgery. However, those surgeries are not fun. Especially when God has to chastise his own children. He's not going to make it, oh yeah, you're my child. You know, Here's a little you know, slap in the back and then you're fine. No. Just like Galatians 6 says, you reap what you sow. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. The Bible has so many verses where the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's so healthy. When you make decisions based on fear of the Lord, I guarantee you, you're going to make a lot of good decisions. Why do you think little children make better decisions with right discipline and right teaching, right counsel and right guidance? Because they know if they make the wrong decision, they're going to be punished. Why is it that when we're little, we tend to follow that rule? But as we grow up, when we become an adult, we don't follow that anymore. Does that mean that things have changed? Maybe you might have changed, but God's word never changes. God's word is always the same. Then, why is it that you lose that focus you're not, you don't have the heart like the little children anymore. Of course, things of the world has gotten you, polluted you. However, you can be cleansed. You could be cleansed through the word of God. Right? You could be cleansed when you have right relationship with the Lord, when you confess your sins, plead the blood of Jesus Christ and get right. Unless you do that, whoever you are, you're living a, you know, hypocritical, deceived life where me, people around you see you and we don't really know what's going on in your life 100%. You could deceive us. However, outside of the church where we don't see you, things are happening where God knows and where you know that you need to get right with the Lord. If you do not get right with the Lord and make the important decision to get, you know, to have a better relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? Especially you've been warned through the Word of God. Especially when you know right and wrong now. Because some people need a wake-up call. Unfortunately, you know, you and I, we're just weak. So sometimes we go through this downhill and we don't even know. That's why God makes sure that you know. Because God is fair God. Okay, 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 okay. You've been messing up for a while now. Okay. It's time for you to get right. That's the most important decision that you could make. Especially when you get that first conviction. The Holy Spirit of God gives you that conviction. Where, okay, you really need to get right with the Lord. At that time, when you make the right decision then you're going to have a joyful Christian life. You get closer to the Lord. However, at that time, when you make the wrong decision, where it's okay, you know, I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear it. Doesn't that happen a lot when you, you know, raise children? They, like, they cover their ears and they feel like they're okay. I didn't hear anything. But that's not an excuse. When you live a life where you live as if, you know, you close your ears and trying to give excuses that I haven't heard anything. Lord, you know, you didn't tell me about that. When clearly God has told you through his word, you know, Holy Spirit conviction and through preachings and Bible studies, you have no excuse. Then, as a Bible believer, so-called, as a saved child of God, what kind of decision are you going to make today? From now on, are every decisions going to be significant to you? Or is it going to be like, you know what? 
I go to church. I do my part. So don't bother me anymore. That's the, that's the exemplary Christian for the devil. Right? Devil wants to be that. Devil says, just come to church. You know, here and there, sit wherever you are. Show up her face. Do your minimum. And just go home. I know you're not going to do anything for God. I know you're not going to confess your sins. I know you're not going to you know, read the word of God. I know you're not going to pray. I know you're just a showy Christian. You know, because you have to you know, live to that standard. That at least you, know, you don't want to look embarrassed. So just do that minimum. For some of you guys, it's working. Because you feel happy. Or you feel at least satisfied that, okay, I'm a minimum Christian. I'm a low-level Christian. So I'm okay. Devil's like, good. You're the type of you know, Christians that I want. I don't want people who want to get closer to the Lord. I don't want people who get convicted of sin. I don't want people you know, who reads the Word of God. I don't want people who wants to support the local church and grow and do something for the Lord. I don't want any of those people. Less of you know, those people and more of you, I'm happy. Can you think about it? I mean, can you imagine all these times, all the decisions that you've ever made were pleasing the devil instead of God? I mean, if you think about that, man, I've been a terrible child of God. I let devil smile and be happy instead of my own father. I let devil dance all over me instead of my own father. Would you do that to your physical parents? I mean, can you imagine if, you know, Nathan is in a bind and someone's like, you better, you know, criticize your mom. Say, cuss at your mom, right? But, you know, you're going to love your mom's enemy. If he did that, especially if his mom knows how he feels about her, how hurt do you think she would be? She'll be heartbroken. And as parents in this room, you know, and I'm not talking about for the wrong reasons, you're still doing the right thing because our God is perfect. So you don't have to worry about that. But as a parent, you make the right decisions, you're doing the right things, and you love your child. However, your child loves your enemy, your child only listens to your enemy, and your child spits at your face when you tell them the right thing to do. As a parent, how would you feel? You'd be angry, but more than that, you'd be most heartbroken. When you know the significance of the decisions that you make, how it affects others, and how it affects the Lord, and at the end of the day, how it affects you, you think otherwise before you make that decision A, when you know it's wrong, B, when you know it's wrong, C, when you know it's wrong. You won't do it anymore because it is more important to you and more significant to you. Then as you look at your life, as you look at your Christian life today, think about it. What kind of decisions have I been making? Have I been neglecting those small decisions? Have I been trying to concentrate on those big decisions? Even in between, have I made right decisions for the people around me? Or have I been so selfish, always making decisions for me? Better yet, am I unequally yoked together with others because of my decisions? Or have I become more holy because of my decisions? Have I gotten closer to the Lord on a daily basis because of my decisions? Or have I become more farther away, backslidden because of my decisions? At the end of the day, you make the decisions. However, just like the Word of God says, you reap what you sow. Let's pray. Pastor Shrive, can you close us in prayer? Father, thank you for your word that speaks to our hearts and convicts us, Lord, when we need, we need your word continually. Thank you, Father, for this message, and we pray that when you said it, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh,
Thank you, everyone.